Can I hear the pitch for watch? Sure. The World Wide Web has gained consciousness. The United States government has become aware of its existence, views it as a, as a threat, and decides to try to eliminate it. Can the formerly blind 15-year-old math genius from Waterloo, Ontario, who first discovered the nascent consciousness, save it from the clutches of the National Security Agency? You don't have a teenage daughter. No. You've never, uh, to my knowledge, been a teenage girl. Never been. Uh, you're married to one who was. Was. Uh, so that's probably about as close as you have sisters? No. No, no, this was, and I tell you, you raise a very good point, Craig, because this is my 18th, 19th, and 20th novels. And how do I keep it fresh for me is finding new ways to challenge myself. And I set out, literally when I was doing, what am I going to do for my next book? What is the character who is as far from me as I could write? And uh, obviously, I've never been a girl. As you said, I'm a long way now from being a teenager. And uh, I'm not blind. And my accountant will tell you I am not a math genius. Um, and I wanted to devise a character who would be very challenging for me to write, and therefore a lot of fun to write. Um, it, writing the bald, bearded, bespectacled, almost 50 novelist would have been a boring way to spend three books for me. Writing somebody that I had to like, learn how to think like somebody who I've never been uh, was the great joy in doing this trilogy. She gets a boyfriend. I don't think that's giving away too much. Nope, his one. name is Matthew. And um, so, yeah, yeah, indeed, Matthew Reese. Last book, she had the jerky hunk uh, Trevor Nordman, her. a.k.a. The Hoser, yes. He returns again in the third book. In fact, I was just editing a scene where her current boyfriend and, and, and uh, The Hoser have their big uh, showdown in the third book. There's just this little reference to him having a hair lip. Yes. And I thought that was great because her, uh, as she says in the fir first book, or her mother does, you don't have any idea of what... Haven't, she's just gained sight from absolute total blindness at 16, never been programmed by the media, doesn't know you know the difference between Angelina Jolie and Phyllis Diller. She's still trying to parse faces, to recognize what is a face and what isn't a face. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's part of the theme of the book uh, is that we either simply do the things that our genes have programmed us to do. And one simple example is we find certain physical traits attractive because they tend to be suggestive of uh, fecundity, and if a man looking at a woman, you look at a woman who looks like she's going to bear children well, that's, you know, curvaceous, big breasts, blah, 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 wide hips, big birth canal, all of that. We can do that. We can just allow our genes to say, you know what, this is how we behave. Or we can, through an act of intellect and volition, decide what's important to us. And Caitlin being able to say, you know, that guy over there, he's sweet, he's bright, he treats me well. And others make fun of him because he has this, this little deformity. Uh, so what? I don't care. The things that I'm going to value are the things that we really should be valuing. And it goes hand in hand with the web mind. It did not evolve. It did, it's not the end product of the way we are, of billions of generations of endless cumulative survivors in the struggle for life. You're alive because every one of your predecessors, right back to the first slime mold, reproduced, outreproduced others who were competing in the same environment. Survival of the fittest is, in a very real sense, survival of the nastiest. You take the most resources, you're, you're rapacious, you plant the most seed, whether figuratively or literally, and you prevail. And that has driven so much, including all the border conflicts, all the religious conflicts, all the prejudice in the world is all driven by the way our genes made us. Do we have to be that way? Or is the value of intellect to be able to say, I choose to program myself instead of to be programmed by selfish genes? I'm starting to think of WebMind as kind of the flip of Colossus, the Forbin project. Is that a fair way you know, of looking flip at flip is exactly right. I was always fascinated by artificial intelligence in science fiction. Uh, my dad took me in 1968 to see 2001 in theaters when it was first playing. I was eight years old when I first saw it. HAL 9000, fascinating computer, kills almost everybody aboard the spaceship. Captain Kirk gets the ultimate computer aboard the Enterprise, Dr. Daystrom's Multitronics unit, kills four starships, right, uh, worth of people. 
Colossus, the Forbin Project, uh, the book by D.F. Jones, the movie starring Eric Braden, uh, Colossus and its, which is an American defense computer and its Soviet counterpart, Guardian, team up and decide to sh subjugate humanity. Uh, the Matrix, where we end up being used as batteries. The Terminator movies, where we end up being uh, a threat and should be eliminated altogether. Everywhere I looked, the visions in science fiction of robots uh, and computers were unrelentingly negative. Um, they either We either had to enslave the robots. Data, or data on Star Trek, and, uh, and Isaac Asimov's robots all had Asimov's laws of robotics. A robot may not injure a human being. They had no volition when it came to those matters. And that's slavery, right? We don't kill each other because, you know, uh, you take the Ten Commandments. If God had wanted that commandment to be an unbreakable imperative, it could have been programmed in genetically. It isn't. It's a piece of advice. You either follow it or you don't. We mostly don't follow it. We either shackle our computers so they have to follow it because the alternative is we are afraid they're going to take over. And I wanted with WebMind to do, as you say, the flip of all of that. Is there a scenario, a plausible, believable scenario under which machines might exceed our, cap our capacities, be more intelligent than we are, and not present a threat to us, but actually present possibly a, a, a real boon to humanity? Uh, so in that sense, Wake, Watch, and Wonder, the WWW trilogy, is utopian literature. It's an attempt to find a positive future out of all of this. The book is Watch, book two of the WWW series. I've been speaking with the author Robert J. Sawyer, and Watch is published by Viking Canada.